Okay, in year nine, I'm just going to do a quick castify video or clip on exercise 8 e factorizing by grouping in pairs. Now, I will have shown you how to do this in class, but I'm just going to go over it again in case some people were away or in case uh, you didn't really get it and I went too fast. So, we need to complete questions two, three, four, five, and six, and we're meant to do the last column, N7. So, let's have a look at these. Now, grouping, now remember the whole point of factorizing, the whole point of factorizing is to get an expression that has an algebraic expression. We've got two things multiplied by each other, and we're going to show that they're equal to zero. Now, that could be x minus 2 and x plus 1 and because we know because we know that this times this must equal 0 well then either the first thing equals 0 or the second thing equals 0 so either x minus 2 equals 0, in which case we add the 2 over and we're going to get x equals 2, or x plus 1 equals 0, and we'll get x equals minus 1. Or, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to find values that will, substan uh, that will make that true. So that's the point of what we're going to be doing. We're going to be finding or rewriting these algebraic expressions in the form of factors, so that then if we put it equal to zero, we can find when that situation occurs for whatever algebraic expression we have. So I'm gonna do the first column because I expect you to do this, the last column, and that way you can do the work. I might try and do some of the, the second, the, the last column. We're gonna start here with question two. So question two, uh, A. And what have we got? Two X plus one plus A X plus one. Now they've set it up for me, but I know I know that I'm looking for the common factors, and the common factors here are the x plus 1. So if I take that out the front, x plus 1, I've taken out the x plus 1, I'm left with the 2 and plus a. And there we go. I'll do 2b. What have I got? 3x plus 3 minus ax plus 3. Now, again, my common factor, my common factor that I can take out is the x plus 3. So, x plus 3, I take out, and I'm left with 3 minus a. So, it's not that hard. I'll do d, and then I'll move on to question uh, 4. I've got a outside of x plus 7 plus 4 x plus 7. Now I'm not changing the expression, I'm just writing it in factorised form. So x plus 7 is a common factor. I take it out the front and I'm left with a plus 4. So it's all pretty easy. Let's have a look at question 3. 
and I'll do 3b. Now I've got x, x plus 4, plus 3, x plus 4. And that equals, and we're, what are my common factors? Well, the x plus 4. So, x plus 4 comes out the front, and I'm left with x plus 3. I'm going to 3c, 2x, 2x plus 3, minus 3, 2x plus 3. My common factors again, the 2x plus 3. So I can take that out the front. And I'm left with 2x minus 3. So all this is pretty easy. I'll leave you to, oh no, I will do I. Why is I difficult? Not really. x minus 2 minus x minus 2. And the reason it's difficult is you've got to realise there's a 1 in front of that. So when you take out the common factor of x minus 2, you're left with x minus 1. So, so what happens when we get to question 4? So again, I'll start with 4b. Now I've got x squared plus 4x plus c plus 4c. Well, what I've got to do first is I've got to, I need to factorise these first two parts of the expression. So I'm going to take x out of the first bit, and I've got x plus 4, plus, I'm going to take c out of the next bit. And I'm sorry, there's an x in there. I just notice that. And I take C out, and I'm left with X plus 4. And now it's just like the ones that we've done previously. It just has one more step. So now my common factor is the X plus 4. And what am I left with? Well, I get X plus 4, and I'm left with X plus C. I'll do another one from uh, 4. So I'll do 4E, which is x squared minus 4x plus 2xa minus 8a. Now that looks pretty complicated, but again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to factorise that one and factorise that one and see what I get. So I'll take x out of the first bit and I'll get x minus 4. That's just the first two terms. And then I'm going to take out 2a. And then I'm left with, if I take 2a out of the first, the third term, I'm left with x. And if I take 2a out of that, now remember I'm dividing, minus 4. And then I have my two common factors, which is the x minus 4. And I've got the x plus 2a. Now, let's have a go at 5. All right, at 5. So 5b. Remember, you're meant to be doing the last column. Now, as soon as I see four terms, that's what I'm thinking. I must somehow factorise them by grouping in pairs. 4BD minus 7CD. 
Okay, let's just look at the first two terms. What can I take out? I can take out A. A is common in both. So I'll take out A. Sorry. And I'm left with 4B minus 7C. Now let's look at the second term. What can I take out? Oh, I can take out D. So I take out positive D. And the signs are going to become important. And I'm left with 4B minus 7C. And now I've got my two common terms, which is 4B minus 7C. And I'll take that out the front, 4B minus 7C. And I'm left with A plus D. Let's have a go at 5B. Pi V is 4x squared plus 12xy minus 3x minus 9y. Okay, again, let's just concentrate on the first term. What can I take out of there? Well, I can take a 4 and an x on the first two terms, sorry. If I take a 4x, what do I get left with in those four, first two terms? Well, I'll be left with an x, and I'll be left with 3y. Now, here's the tricky bit. Have a look at the next two terms. What can I take out? I can take out, here's the trick, minus... 3. If I take out minus 3, I'll be left with positive x plus 3y. Now that was important, that sign change. Now my common factors are x plus 3y. And I'm left with 4x minus 3. Right, 6, 6, C. I'll have a go at these because I think you might have trouble with these. What have I got? X squared plus BX plus X plus B. Now they've given me a hint in the question. They've said, remember a fact to use a factor of 1. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at the first term. Well, I'll take an x out of the front of those two. And I'll be left with x plus b. Plus. Well, there's nothing I can take out of the second two terms, or the last two terms. I can take out 1, though. If I take out 1, then I'll be left with x plus b. And now I can see it. I'll take x plus b out the front. And I'm left with x plus 1. All right. You have a go at 6f. I want to have a go now at 7. This is how they can make it very tricky. Now, what happens if they don't write them in that order? What happens if the four terms are written in a different order? So I'm going to do 7b. And I already know these are around the wrong way. But you need to be able to look at one and go, oh, well, I can't factorise the first two terms. So let's write question 7b, 5x plus 2y plus xy plus 10. Now, if I look at this, 5x and 2y, my first two terms, nothing comes out of there. And xy and 10, nothing comes out of there as well. But if I move this 10 up here, 
then I might have a different case. Let's have a look at what happens when I move that 10 to that spot. Now you've got to be very careful with the signs when you're doing this because remember I'm moving plus 10. So 5x plus 10 plus 2y plus xy. Now I can find a factor in there and I can find a factor in there. Let's have a go. And I'll have 5 outside of x plus 2. And I'll take y out of that. And I'll have 2 plus x. Oh, but they're not the same. Well, 2 plus x and x plus 2 are the same thing. Because when I add two things, I can write them in any order. So I'm just going to write that as x plus 2, because it does not matter. And then I have my x plus 2 out the front and my 5 plus y. I could write that as y plus 5 even if I wanted to, if I wanted to write the prime numeral first, which is what we tend to do. All right, let's try one that's got some negatives in it. So I'm going to try 7h. So 7h Fifteen P minus eight R fifteen P minus eight R minus five PR plus twenty four minus five PR plus twenty four. Double check that. Righto. So how am I going to rearrange that? I reckon the fives are going to have to go together and the eight and the 24 are going to have to go together. So I'm going to move that 5PR up to it. And I have to be careful, because when I move it, I've got to take minus 5PR. So 15, this equals 15P minus 5PR. I'll leave the minus 8R plus 24. Now already I'm looking at this, so I'm going to have a negative in the middle here, and I'm going to have a negative out the front. I'm going to swap these two terms as well. I'm going to move that 24 and that negative 8R. So 15P minus 5PR plus 24 minus 8R. Now you can move these terms as long as you keep the sign that is in front of the term, right? Because that's where it belongs. It belongs to the term immediately behind it. Well, now let's see if I can factorise. In the first two terms, I can take 5p out. And that leaves me with 3 minus r. Now here, if I take 8 out, 8 goes into 24 three times, and I'm left with minus r and there we have it so i'll take the three minus r out the front and the five p plus eight now i'm going to do one of the ones for you because you might have some troubles with it and remember you've got to do seven also ten and i did say Ah, uh, sorry, not 10, 9. Now, I'll just do the last one in 7. 16, because so, you might have had some difficulty with it. 16x minus 3y. 16x. Minus 8xy plus 6. Minus 8xy plus 6. So, you look at it, and you think, all right, what's going to go together? Well, I reckon the 8xy is going to go with the 16. And I reckon the 3y is going to go with the 6. So let's just move that 8xy. 
oops, 16 x minus 8xy minus 3y plus 6. Now, okay, the 16 and the 8, and I've got the 3 and the 6, so I'm feeling pretty happy, but I'm going to have a negative. I'm going to have this around the wrong way. I want the positive thing first, so I'm going to put the 6 there. I'm going to change it around. So 16x minus 8xy. Move the plus 6 to there. Minus 3y goes to the back. Let's see what I can get out of this. I can take 8x out of this, and that'll leave me with 2 minus y. Now, if I take 3 out of this, well, 3 goes into 6 twice, and if I take 3 out of the back end, I'm just left with y. So I have my common factor of 2 minus y, and my 8x plus 3. And that's it. That's grouping in pairs. And that's now question 9. Question 9. If you can get to do that, the last column, I'll be really impressed. All right. Actually, I will have a go at... No, I'll let you have a go at question 9 because that's going to lead us on to the next lesson's work. It's very interesting. See how you go with question 9.